Did you know that Yahoo could have been the world's most valuable company right now? Once upon a time, it used to be the most popular website on the internet. They were valued at $128 billion. Also, in the late 1990s, they could purchase Google for just $1 million. Yahoo declined. Hi guys, and welcome to our channel once again. In this video, we are going to see the insane and ridiculous rise and sharp fall of Yahoo, which was once ruling the internet. If you're interested to know how these search engines came into existence, and even before that, then stay tuned till the end of the video to find out everything, as the video will show Yahoo's dramatic rise and fall. Yahoo invented many of the services we now take for granted, such as cloud storage and website creation. However, the name Yahoo has vanished, consumed by the tech world's food chain. But the question which comes up in everyone's mind is, how did Yahoo get into all of this? Let's find out. In early 1994, both Stanford graduates, Jerry Yang and David Filo, began compiling a directory of websites they liked. Their website categorizes and subcategorizes pages. It was a success back then. They chose Yahoo as its name. Some articles also claim that the name stands for yet another hierarchically organized oracle. However, both Filo and Yang agreed that the definition of Yahoo is somewhat rude, unsophisticated, and uncouth. They even included advertising, which would be both a boon and a curse. Now, imagine a world without Google. Before search engines, the internet was disorganized, which is why two college friends, Jerry and David, made a list of all the websites they liked. They then forwarded this list to some other friends, who shared it with their friends, and they also further shared it with their friends. And before long, this directory had thousands of visitors. However, this was never intended to be a commercial venture. Jerry and David had simply created this directory to keep track of their favorite sites in one place, and they'd simply title it Jerry and David its guide to the World Wide Web. However, in 1994, Netscape released Navigator, a web browser that quickly became popular. The creators of this browser included a link to David and Jerry's directory at the top so that people could easily find websites to browse. This meant that within a few months, their directory had millions of visitors. This sounds great, but it meant Jerry and David needed to invest in servers to handle all of the traffic. They also needed to hire people to review all of the new websites submitted to their directory. As a result, David and Jerry realized they had no choice but to turn into a business if they wanted to keep it going. From there, the word Yahoo originated. Yahoo was the most visited website in the world in the early 2000s, just before the dot-com bubble burst. During the 2000s, Yahoo made a lot of bad decisions and eventually lost all of its value. In 2017, the activities of Yahoo were even divided into two sections. Thus, Verizon paid $4.48 billion for Yahoo Internet's division, while shares in Alibaba and Yahoo Japan were held in the newly formed company Altaba. During the dot-com bubble burst and the internet company stock prices crashed, Yahoo was a hard hit. Investors also lost faith in them, and many of Yahoo's biggest advertisers either reduced their ad spending or went bankrupt. What was even worse was that with so many different sites on the internet now, having a single directory that had to be manually updated was no longer efficient. On the other hand, Google had created a much better system to help people find things faster. As a result, Yahoo discovered that many of its users were now using Google instead of Yahoo's directory. So, just a few years later after turning down the opportunity to buy Google's entire company, Yahoo approached Google to negotiate a licensing agreement in which Google Search would be integrated into Yahoo's website. This was going to turn out to be another disaster. Yahoo users adored Google Search and having it on Yahoo's site provided Google with free advertising. Not only that, but Google had begun to include advertisements in search results, employing a clever algorithm to match the right ads to the right search terms. This meant that Google's ads were more relevant to users, less expensive for advertisers, and more profitable for Google. Google then reinvested those profits in deals with other large internet companies, such as becoming the default homepage of the Firefox web browser. By this time, Google started stealing both Yahoo's users as well as its advertisers, that too at a rapid speed. 
Microsoft and Yahoo were very well aware of Google's rise to power and discussed an acquisition opportunity several times in 2005, 2006, and 2007. While analysts were doubtful of the combination of these companies' technologies, Microsoft was still interested in Yahoo and eventually proposed $44.6 billion to buy all of Yahoo in early 2008. Following Terry Semmel's departure as CEO of Yahoo, Jerry Yang was strongly opposed to such an acquisition, claiming that it doesn't represent a fair price for Yahoo. After months of blathering and a new offer from Microsoft to simply acquire Yahoo's search engine division, the deal was still not done, causing the Yahoo stock price to drop significantly. This new missed opportunity was made even more surprising when Jerry Yang's successor entered into a 10-year agreement with Microsoft in 2009 to grant Steve Ballmer's company full access to its search engine technology to help Microsoft develop its internal search engine Bing. It was not to be understood, and it demonstrates the numerous management errors at the head of Yahoo that led to the company's current state. Back then, if Yahoo wanted to maintain its dominance, it needed to concentrate its efforts on other services. One big chance for Yahoo to do so came in 2006. Yahoo executives met with Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg and a deal was struck for Yahoo to purchase Facebook for $1 billion. Now, Zuckerberg didn't want to do the deal, but his board of directors and investors told him that if Yahoo offered him $1 billion, he had no choice but to accept. However, at the last minute, Yahoo tried to undercut Facebook, saying that they could only offer $850 million. This negotiation strategy completely backfired. Zuckerberg left the meeting delighted as he turned down Yahoo's offer, and he got to keep running Facebook as an independent company. Once again, Yahoo's attempt to save a few million dollars resulted in the loss of a company worth around a trillion dollars. The most strange aspect is that Yahoo made hundreds of acquisitions and mergers, including $5.7 billion for a site called Broadcast.com while turning down Facebook and Google. They also passed up opportunities with eBay and YouTube. Imagine how different the internet and the world would be if Yahoo had purchased these companies when it had the opportunity. When compared to competitors, Yahoo's phone apps were embarrassingly bad. As a result, Yahoo's most popular services, such as Yahoo Mail, began to lose users as people began to use email apps instead of Yahoo's website. It didn't help that Yahoo implemented an internal employee rating system in which managers had to rate a certain percentage of their team as exceeding their targets and a certain percentage as missing their targets. So, even if the entire team performed admirably, some people had to receive low marks. The idea was that it would help Yahoo become more efficient by weeding out less talented employees. In reality, it created a fiercely competitive culture in which people would backstab each other rather than collaborate as a team, and it made employees feel like they were competing against each other. But the most important reason for Yahoo's sudden decline is quite simple. When Yahoo first launched, its directory solved a genuine problem. It made the early internet far more accessible. However, once search replaced the need for a directory, Yahoo never found its true purpose. It illustrated the phrase, Jack of all trades, master of none. Yahoo did many things well, but it was no longer the best at anything. Eventually, all of their hundreds of products and services were outperformed by better alternatives. Yahoo Shopping was outperformed by Amazon, WhatsApp defeated Yahoo Messenger, and Gmail surpassed Yahoo Mail. All of these other companies focused on being the best at one thing before expanding into other areas, whereas Yahoo had lost its identity. Yahoo was once the undisputed king of the internet, but they'd lost it all due to a combination of bad decisions, indecision, mediocre products, fierce competition, and poor leadership. Verizon purchased Yahoo in 2017 for $4.48 billion, which was less than the one-tenth of the price Microsoft had offered. But Verizon was unable to revive Yahoo either, and it was sold again in 2021. Of course, Yahoo still makes money. Several of their products, such as Yahoo Mail, continued to receive a lot of traffic. But this was mostly from people who set up their email addresses with them years ago and haven't switched to an alternative. Yahoo appears doomed to fade into obscurity in the absence of radical innovation.